Now this is a bird that actually won money in a race. That cannot be overstated that that is the most important attribute of a racing pigeon. After all, what's the point? You know, what's the point of racing without winning? <laughs> you know? Hey guys, Phil here at Breeder's Journey, and today I'm going to be discussing pedigrees. Uh, real quick disclaimer before I start, you'll notice I have the lofts and names and numbers of people, individuals, blocked out. That's because I don't want anybody to judge the performance of a loft or a family or a breeder based off one or two birds that I've had experience with. That just doesn't make sense. The way that genetics works is pretty much like a lottery. Um, so, you know, you can't really judge based off of one bird. So, if you do recognize the pedigrees or the names or whatever, please don't comment on it. I don't want anybody getting trolled or people saying, oh, this guy is no good or whatever. It happens. When you're breeding performance animals, even from two of the best breeders that you have, in my experience, about two out of ten are probably going to be duds. So, just something to keep in mind. One thing that I personally never want to see on a pedigree is a bird coming off of stock birds. That means that they have no performance record of their own and they were kept based solely off of the pedigree, which I feel is wrong. A lot of people will buy an animal, not just pigeons, and dogs and lots of other things. People will buy an animal because of the pedigree, and regardless of whether or not it fits the standard, which in our case is performing, uh, they will breed it because the pretty names and the pretty titles that go back. But that is a mistake. Because if your animal can't perform at the basic level of what you're expecting it to produce, chances are it's not going to be able to produce that. So that's why I always performance test my birds. And that's why this particular bird actually lost on a 70 mile, 75 mile toss. Now can you breed good birds off of parents that were kept for stock solely without being performance tested? Absolutely. You know? Because again, breeding is like the lottery. You can also find pigeons that you can get for free at your local club that'll win first place for you. It's just, you know, a matter of do you want to try a hundred birds to get the success that you want? Or would you rather try ten birds and get closer to that success? So, for those of you who don't know, a pedigree is basically just a record of ancestry for an animal. And that's just a fancy way of saying it shows dad, mom, grandma, grandpa, so on and so forth. That's important, especially in the case of performance breeding pigeons, because you can see individuals' performance record as well as the family's performance record which is arguably more important in pigeons. On to the meat and potatoes. So when you're selecting pigeons based off of a pedigree for one loft racing, what are you looking for? Well, first off, it'd be nice if the parents, this is the individual here, if the parents actually have a performance record. In this case, they do not. These are both stock birds. Good stock birds, but stock birds nonetheless. So if I just violated the first rule <laughs> that I set down, why is it that I picked this bird? One reason and one reason alone. Wolverine. The grandfather of this bird was Wolverine. Wolverine, if you don't know, is one of the best producing one loft race breeders on the planet. Abigail is also one, 
two times back here. She's one of the best breeding pigeons on the planet as well. Wolverine features twice on this side at the great level. Like great grandpa. So I figured I was getting pretty inbred Norman blood, which is what I was after. In pigeons, it's more important to have a good bloodline than an individual bird because a lot of times really well-performing birds don't actually produce that well. So if you can get a bird that has a pedigree like this that also performs, even if it's not, say, the best, if it's top 20%, then that's something that's really valuable to your breeding program because it's reproducible. It's not just a one-off shot. I'm not going to go fully into breeding here, but I will mention that something that we as breeders look for is known as uh, nicking. So a lot of times when you place two birds together from the same bloodline, you'll get the higher percentage of them nicking and creating a good blend of their genetics. And when you find a pair that produces well because they nick, you're going you're gonna to hold on to those really tight because they're going to produce year after year after year for you. Finding a pair like that is really difficult and it's something that most breeders are actively trying to do. But it's a lot harder than you think. So you can cross blood and get, a, get birds that nick and that produce well consistently. But the thing with that is that their offspring, you're going to have to do some stabilizing to get that uniformity and stability in the line. Stuff like this line breeding on the one line breeding onto one foundation bird. A foundation bird is like just one that produces really well or performs really well that you want to kind of lock in the traits of for the line. Say if I had a Hoosier Classic winner, what I would do is I would take her, I would breed her to the closest relative that I have of her, probably her brother, breed them together, and what that's going to do is lock in the traits that I want and bring out the traits that I don't want. So this is where selection is going to be really critical. But we're not going to get into that right now. Uh, this particular bird comes off of Red Monkey, who won first place at the Victoria Falls, and Abigail. Abigail is one of the best breeders in the world as well. So really solid genetics all the way through. And then when you come down here, these are both stock, but Wolverine again to Zoro's Dream. And down here you got Wolverine again to Abigail again. So that's doubled up too, which is really nice. But the bird did not perform. Didn't make it back. And that's the main criteria for a homing or racing pigeon, is that they make it back. So... I will try again with this, but for now, moving on. This is a bird that I bought off of auction a few weeks back. I just treated him for canker, which I'm assuming he got from the stress of travel. But this is his pedigree. So as you can see, I have a thing for the Norman blood. I really like what it does. So I want to incorporate that into my loft. This bird again, unfortunately, off of two stock birds. So not ideal. However, once again, if you go back just one more generation, we've got Jaws 1 here. Jaws 1 took equal first, second at Victoria Falls and he was bred to Hoosier Treasure which was equal first 8th average speed 2016 Hoosier Classic 350 miles and 
and took home $30,000. Half-sister to Sun City. That's important because Sun City is a really solid breeder and performer. On the bottom side, we have Badger as the grandpa. Badger is nestmate to Jaws 1. So that's inbreeding right there. And then down at the bottom, guess who we have again? Who's your treasure? So double inbred on the top. Who's your treasure's parents? Sky Sharky and Winston, also really amazing birds. Badger, you know, same as Jaws. Obviously they produced Jaws, so they're phenomenal birds. Um, all around, this is just a solid pedigree. And I'm still getting my Wolverine back there. Mike has a very good one. Special Lady, Mozart, Skyrocket, Sharky. Mike has a very good one again. And more of the same. So this is a really solid pedigree. But it's not ideal, again, because of the stock birds. This is King. This is my first pedigreed bird. He comes from Racing Whites. He was a splash that had kind of a saddle on him. Really good bird, but one night he just disappeared, so I, I don't know what happened with that. Um, maybe something got him, or maybe he flew off and something got him. I don't know, but he disappeared, and I never saw him again. Very simple pedigree. I got him because he was cheap, and because I thought he looked nice. If we go back, none of this is really important. You can see he comes off of gel rosiers, vervoort, wire, boars bernia, and bay boop that bird, I don't really know. But that's all that's all good, especially boars bernia. I really like that. And the gel rosiers, that stuff is like the bedrock of pigeon racing. This is Cannonball's pedigree. Cannonball is my best non-white bird and possibly my best bird overall. He comes off of stock birds. <laughs> but you see, he performs, so I don't really care anymore what comes before this because it's almost irrelevant. He does, however, come off of this side from consistent wins and on the top side here from consistent winners. So that's nice to know. We got Bulldozer back here, Lil Dozer. Down here we got Tentel, Vegas Hen, Troublemaker, good names. Down here we got Berkey, Protege Picasso. So this bird is actually one of my cheapest birds. I got this for, I want to say, like 75 bucks. Maybe 100. I can't remember. But it was super cheap, and I just got it because I just liked the bird, and I liked the pedigree, and I was just willing to try it out because it was so cheap. And it turned out to be the best one out of a lot. Now this is a bird that actually won money in a race. That cannot be overstated that that is the most important attribute of a racing pigeon. After all, what's the point? You know, what's the point of racing without winning? <laughs> you know? This bird has proven itself, performed, and brought home money for its owner. That is the epitome of what you should strive to achieve with your pigeons. The point of one loft race is to eliminate all the variables that you get in club and combine. Take away all the advantages of somebody's home location or how much money they have and simply test the genetics of the birds head to head. This end here flew the Pacific Northwest Challenge, 14th place, 300 miles, 
and 33rd at 350 miles. She comes directly off of a winner and a two-time producer. This guy bred the Crooked River 11th place, 350 miles, and the Pacific Northwest 14th, which is her. Down here, this is a Hoosier Classic Yearling First Ace Pigeon. And if we go back to the greats, this one is stock, but it comes directly off of Inbred Duran, which is Koopman. And you get Koopman inbred twice on here. Koopman, if you don't know, is a really well-known racer in Europe. His blood is solid as it gets. So the fact that it's continuing and winning, that to me makes this bird even more valuable. Uh, we also have Kloss on this side. Koopman again, Sudoff Van Beers, and Gainis. So all of that is really high quality stuff, especially the Koopman, especially the Koopman. The Kloss is also really good. But the Koopman is really what I was interested in because it's on both sides. So that tells me that this is going to be a solid foundation bird. So I'm going to take this bird that's actually won and breed it to my best performing bird in my little mini races and enter those into the one lofts next season. Just for fun, I want to show you the pedigrees of some of my birds. This is Taco. She came off of a white cyan bird named the Queen and King. King came off of Boris Berniat, Revert, Gel Rosers, and Betty Boop, whatever that is. That's my favorite bird. This is my best white bird, Shaka Zulu, who comes off of two unpedigreed birds, Angel and Cloud, both cyan crosses. This bird outperformed over a thousand dollars worth of birds. <laughs> this bird outperformed a three, two three hundred fifty dollar birds and two hundred dollar birds, and this is his pedigree. This is the pedigree for the breeding of Renella and Shaka. These are two of the whites that made it through the season. Renella is directly off Taco and Chungus. Chungus comes from Angel and Cloud, the Cyan Crosses. Queen is a Cyan Cross, King is not. Cloud and Angel again on this side. So we're getting inbreeding, which is important because I want to establish a line. So we're getting solid inbreeding here. Not too close, but close enough that I can start to establish my line and the performance traits that I'm after. I can sum this up in about five simple rules. Number one, don't buy stock or stock bred birds. If a bird is kept for stock, chances are the person who owns it is a pigeon peddler. There's a lot of people that make a lot of money purely off of breeding birds. Those are not the birds you want. People like me who keep small numbers, let the basket cull for them know are doing legitimate breeding I'm not gonna sell you a bird 
that nix with another bird. I'm not going to sell you a particular valuable bird because I can make so much more breeding it myself. So all you're really going to get is the scraps at best. So don't buy stock birds. Number two, performance over everything. Test, test, test. Handling is stupid. Eye sign is stupid. Doesn't matter. Does the bird win? That's what matters. Top 10, top 20%, that's good. And just remember that a pedigree is a piece of paper. Number three, buy bloodlines, not birds. Don't buy a freak one-off bird. You're going to do yourself a much better service if you buy a bird with a solid bloodline. There's a reason certain people who buy the winners of certain famous races aren't exactly taking first place at those races. You know what I mean? It's people who are breeding solid bloodlines and breeding right. Number four, don't spend more than what you can afford. I, I can attest to this. I've lost. $350 birds and $100 birds and ultimately it comes down to the individual my best birds are my whites and they really don't even have pedigrees so just goes to show you performance 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 and number five do your homework also a little tidbit beware of club racers so in doing your homework I'm going to leave a link down below to a website that shows all the data because it's public for one lot races. Uh, but when you're buying birds, just be aware that you're not buying first place in a B race in a club that has 30 birds flying. You know, that's not really much use to you. And especially if you fly one lot races, you have to understand that the clubs, there's a lot of factors that lead to first places that may not necessarily have a lot to do with the genetics of a bird. Also, I've heard club people say that the mentality of their birds is different than one loft. I'm not so sure about that. I've never raced them, so I can't say, but I would just say that uh, the skill of the individual is a lot more at play in club racing, where one loft racing is more about genetics. That should be it.